I truly believe it starts in our mind. I mean, as different, if you feel like you're different, you are different. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I was taught from a very young age is that I'm not. And um, I was never led to uh, baseline off of other girls in racing or what other girls had accomplished. It was only about who was the quickest and, and being that person, uh, being that driver and, uh, and continuing to excel to my furthest capacity. So, um, so I, I think that, you know, there have been status quos in the world of things that fit in and there are like even in racing for me some guys are you know a lot of guys are kind of get along with their crew and they're you know more towards you know gear heads and stuff and so you know i'm not and so uh -huh. i kind of recognize like all right in this capacity i am a girl i am a little bit different like i don't i'm not into cars i don't really care about them um but it doesn't mean that i'm not well equipped to drive the car and do that job and the things that I enjoy and love and that I'm good at suit that job. Um, so I think there can be and that the differences are what makes the world go round. I'm not maybe the most PC about this topic but you know you have to be competing in something or doing something that has a demand and so I get that it's the same job, but what drives the salary? And that is the demand or the interest. So if somebody's doing the same job in the workplace, um, you know, and there's, there's nothing outside of it other than pure performance, that should be equal. I get that. But like, let's say a sport that's on TV that gets, you know, millions and millions of viewers versus another sport that's on TV that doesn't, the money's coming from TV, it's coming from sponsorship, it's coming from those things, and it's not there. So it's not fair to compare the two. Um, so I think there are all kinds of different ways to look at it, but for me it's it's about being unique and different and having something, having a consumable product. Oh, this weekend we race, we race from Valentine's Day to, no, to Thanksgiving, so no, February through November. Uh, we race 38 out of 48 weekends. This, uh, this weekend is in Richmond, Virginia. Okay. So and speaking of entrepreneur, I'm driving my Warrior car, which is my clothing line that I just started this year. Okay. Uh, it's called Warrior by Danica Patrick, and right now it's sold on HSN. So uh, HSN and Warrior is what's on the car this weekend. Um, so yeah, that's a, a new venture for me, okay. um, which has been so much fun. So I haven't seen it. What, is it, what does it look like? Uh, it's athleisure. So it's, oh. um, you know, t-shirts, leggings, you know, jackets, sweatshirts, sweaters, um, you know, tank tops, things like that, sports bras. Okay. And when did you launch it? Uh, launched it in January this year. Wow. So are you concerned about that? Well, we thought that last weekend in Darlington, South Carolina, that, um, that the hurricane was going to end up coming through from the Gulf up and around and catch us, but it actually went north. So we actually were missed by it. Um, but... Uh, and I think we're going to miss this coming one, uh, Irma. Isn't that the one that's coming through the through the Bahamas um, and up the coast? I think it's supposed to maybe hit land on maybe Saturday or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Well, Virginia's a little bit further up, yeah. and we race on Saturday night, so I think we're going to miss that too. But we have, by all means, um, NASCAR, especially racing on the south and racing on the east coast. We have we have had days canceled before they even come because NASCAR knows it's going to be a 100% washout rainout, and it's not. Not safe for people to go to the track. Right. Not a not a rainout for the entire weekend, but they might call off like Friday altogether and say, "We're not. Nobody needs to go to the track." Well, I would just say from a female perspective, I think that um, you know hormones play a huge role. I believe um, you know the stresses of us of you know taking on more and more tasks as we get older and juggling a million things. Um, you know, learning your triggers. But I do think that while men have hormones, women get even more. So. I think that's something to look at. Actually, that was like one, the last thing I haven't done is I haven't tracked like cycle things as a woman to see if it coincides with any kind of timing of that. Um, so, uh, but if they tend to, if they get on a bad path where they see more frequent, I will by all means be tracking that. Um, I, um, I have a book coming out in January um, called Pretty Intense. Your second one. Right? It's the second one, that's right. Um, it's, this is a health and fitness book, so this is completely different than um, Crossing the Line that came out in 2006 okay. um, that was all about my life, of course. Um, this is, um, I, I mean, I, there are 50 recipes in it that I wrote and photographed. 
Um, there is a 12-week workout program in it that I wrote and tested and did videos for and everything. Um, did a test panel of 700 people with it um, in January of this past year and had incredible results. Um, and there is a whole mental section to the book. Um, there's physical, physical, uh, the physical part explains the workouts and why they are like they are and how to increase your intensity to benefit yourself. Um, so there's, I, I mean, I, I really, I feel like have, have written, I have a writer, but I feel like I've written 75% of this book and I've worked extremely hard on it. So I'm excited about that. I mean, I work out every day. So for me, this, and I cook every day and I love it. So, um, I would love to have a cooking show someday. So, you know, that all is, is all in line. Um, and then I finally this year um, started selling my wine. Um, I bought a vineyard, actually, I bought land in 2008. 2009, I think it actually was purchased, and so um, I saw it in 2008 and uh, planted it, grew the gr grew the grapes, and finally I'm making my own estate wine now. So, um, where is the, that vineyard? In Napa Valley. Okay. The name of the wine is called Somnium. S O M N I U M. It's a Latin word to dream, and uh, originally going to the valley, I fell in love back in 2006, and just thought. I would love to have a vineyard, I'd love to make wine, and this is probably just a dream as I don't have $50 million to do that. Um, but I found out that you can do it in much slower phases and it doesn't quite cost that much. I mean, you can by all means spend $50 million if you want to, but um, but getting with the right people and taking the right steps and having the time to wait for it to grow and wait for the wine to mature, um, you know, here we are in 2017 and it's finally for sale. So very long project, but um, finally come to fruition and um, it's had phenomenal reviews.